Chewy's stock price dropped by more than 11% in the aftermarket trading and that is because of the Q2 earnings call that was released. It turns out that they fell short on analyst expectations. So in this video we will have a look at the Q2 earnings call and then we will also do a fundamental analysis on Chewy to see if this is a stock that you should be buying for the long term or not. So with that being said let's head over into the stock price first and see what happened. As you can see this stock have dropped by more than 11% in the aftermarket and if we zoom out a little bit to one year you will see that the stock is actually up 24.72% but if we zoom out five years you will see that before the pandemic this stock was actually trading at around $30. So as you can see and as you can imagine the pandemic has been really good for Chewy and they have seen a tremendous growth because of the pandemic as well and from everyone staying at home. So let's have a look at the results from the Q2 earnings call. It says that the stock was down more than 11% at one point before pairing some of the losses to trade down roughly 9% at 5.30 p.m. Chewy saw revenue rise nearly 27% on a year-over-year -year basis to 2.16 billion in the second quarter, but analysts were expecting sales of 2.2 billion, according to Refinitiv. The company also lost four cents per share compared with the estimates of a loss of two cents per share according to Refinitiv. Chewy's third quarter sales guidance of 2.2 billion to 2.22 billion also came in slightly lighter than expectations. Analysts projected 2.23 billion in the third quarter sales according to the street account. Now if we scroll down it says that Chewy has benefited from the coronavirus pandemic in two ways. A surge in online shopping as we know in general and a booming pet business as Americans spend more time at home leading to increased pet adoption and spending on animals. So that makes sense right? I mean if you think back to the actual hard lockdowns that we had you were sitting at home you were spending less on traveling and you were also socializing less so you had more disposable income and as a result of staying at home you also spent more time with your pets. That led to a lot of people actually adopting pets and with that being said they also obviously spent more money on providing for their pets. So now I want to take you over to some really interesting stats about Chewy that really surprised me. If you look at this page it says that Chewy.com is the seventh most used online shop with Amazon in first place. As you can see and as you can imagine Amazon is first place then Walmart, Target, Best Buy, Kohl's, Home Depot and then Chewy. So this really surprised me. I didn't think that Chewy would be the seventh largest online shop in the US at the moment. So that is a really good thing for Chewy and it shows that they have had a lot of growth. But looking at some of the customer stats around Chewy this is also pretty interesting. So 58% are female, 42% male. As you can see the age groups buying from Chewy is actually very very diversified. And then if you look at the household size the majority is people of a two household size and then 62% town and rural and then 38% are from urban areas. So that was pretty interesting but now I'm going to head over to the fundamentals and look at the financial health of Chewy to see if it is a stock to be buying for the long term or not. Now the first thing we always look at is the basics and the stock price is currently $87.43 and by the time you look at it it might be completely different. So the market cap is sitting at 36.3 billion so absolutely massive market cap for this company. PE ratio no PE ratio because well they are unprofitable at the moment and the five year average also nothing because they have never been profitable. The price to book is sitting at 526.2 versus minus 56.73. The price to sales 4.7 versus 4.27 and then the price to cash flow 172 versus 225.7 and then finally the price to free cash flow is sitting at 436.1. To give you an idea I generally look at a price to free cash flow of 15 to 20 and if it's less than 15 even better for me. So as you can see at the moment you are paying for a lot of future growth already with Chewy. So you have to be very confident that this company is continue to grow and as we have seen from the earnings call they don't expect the same kind of growth that they have been seeing in the last while. So now I want to take you over to the actual financial health and to the fundamentals to look at the company's financial status. And if you like this video so far please remember to click that like button below this video. It really helps out the channel a lot. So looking at the revenue we will see that they have had amazing growth for in the last four years especially from 2020 to 2021. But as you can see it has been slowing down over the last while as well. 
Now looking at the earnings per share, we will see that it has always been in the negative. However, it is heading in the right direction. However, still in the negative. Now looking at the return on equity, you will see that it's zero because, well, it's currently in the negative. The same with the return on invested capital, which really bothers me. This tells you that this company is not able to retain equity within their company and they are not able to invest the capital for the shareholders effectively as well because the return on invested capital is still sitting at zero. Now looking at the gross margins, we will see that the gross margins have been increasing, which is a good sign to me. However, the gross margins are still pretty small, sitting at 27%. However, this is retail and I do acknowledge that retail generally is lower margins. But now looking at the net margins, we will see that the net margins are still in the negative. Currently sitting at zero and with the Q2 earnings call, they also had a net loss as well. So currently the net margins are in the negative. However, they did have stock compensation, which did bring the net margins down. But that being said, still in the negative at the moment, but it has been heading in the right direction. If you look at 2019, you'll see that it was minus 8%. So as you can see, it has been increasing and heading in the right direction. Looking at the operating cash flow, which is the money that they make from the day to day operations, you will also see that it has been growing as well. In 2018, it was minus 80 million, but it's now sitting at 210 million. But keep in mind, the net margins are still zero. So this means that the money that you are seeing in the operating cash flows are coming from a different source. Now looking at the free cash flows, you will see that it has also been heading in the right direction. It has actually turned positive in 2021 and currently sitting at 83 million. So now I head over to the current ratio to see if the company has got more current assets than current liabilities. And for that to happen, they need to have a current ratio of one or higher. Looking at Chewy, we will see that they fall just below one. So that is very concerning to me. It shows me that Chewy doesn't have enough current assets than current liabilities. So if they come across a very difficult year, they will find it very difficult to actually repay their debts. Now heading over to the debt to equity ratio, I generally want companies to have a debt to equity ratio of 40% or less. In this case, as you can see, it is sky high, sitting at 540% for Chewy. So the debt to equity ratio is extremely high. I mean, my benchmark is sitting at around 40%. They are coming in at 540%. So definitely a big concern to me. Now, the last thing I'm going to look at is the shares outstanding to see if there's any shareholder dilution going on here. As you can see, there is a little bit of shareholder dilution going on, going from 398 million to 440 million shares. However, it isn't that much, so not that big of a concern to me. So that is the fundamentals. Now we are going to take all of the data we looked at just now and then score them down in a 10 point checklist to see how they perform in terms of the fundamentals. Once again, if you like this video, please remember to click that like button below this video now. So looking at the current ratio, you will see that it's currently sitting at 0.92. The debt to equity ratio is sitting at 538% at the moment. So that's very, very high. The revenues have been growing by 38.1% compounded annual growth over the last four years. So that is a good sign. The return on equity and return on invested capital zero. The free cash flows and the operating cash flows have not been growing by more than 10% compounded annual growth. The gross margins more than 20, sitting at 27 at the moment net margins minus 0.1 and then the earnings per share unfortunately have not been in positive so that scores them two out of ten for the fundamentals so as you can see the fundamentals doesn't look great at all so now i'm going to head over to the insider activities to see what the insiders are doing in the company if they are buying shares it means that they are positive about the stock price going up in the future and if they are selling shares well then it's a red flag to me so looking at the insider activity, we will see that the total shares held by insiders sitting at 19.98 million. Total purchases sitting at 6.3 million and the total sales sitting at 6.6 .6 million, which means that it's a net sell of 330,000 shares. However, that only makes up 0.4% of the total shares held by the insiders. So that is nothing to really be concerned about. 0.4% is a very small number. Now I'm going to look at the analyst ratings to see what the analysts think about this stock. As you can see, the analysts are bullish about this stock rating at 4.04 .04 out of 5, 10 saying very bullish, 4 bullish, 6 neutral, and then 1 very bearish. They are predicting a price target of $101.30 and currently the stock is trading at $87.50. 
40 cents. However, it's actually less now in the aftermarket trading as well. And by the time you watch this video, it will be even less than that. Now, this brings me to the final part of this video, which is my verdict and what I think about Chewy stock. If you like this video so far, please remember to click that like button. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking that red subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified whenever we do more videos like this. So looking at the fundamentals, we will see that it's sitting at 2 out of 10, so not great at all. Insiders are not really selling shares, it's only 0.4%, so it's a very small number. Current price is $87.43. The analyst 12-month target is $101.13. Personally, I feel that there is a lot of competition in this space at the moment. Nothing is preventing, let's say, Amazon from taking over their market share. Even with the tailwinds they have been getting from the coronavirus and the pandemic, they are still unprofitable, which is a very big concern to me. I would expect this company to be profitable with the amount of tailwinds they have been getting. The growth will slow down as they have come out and said it as well. And I feel that they don't have a strong enough competitive advantage to be competing in this space for the long term. And for those reasons, I think that this stock is currently a sell. As you can see, these guys are burning through cash at the moment. However, it is heading in the right direction. I absolutely love the company. I love the management and I am a pet owner myself. So I absolutely love the product. However, the stock, I don't feel comfortable buying this stock at the moment. I think it is very, very overpriced, especially if you look at those multiples as well. When it comes to capital allocation, I feel that there is better opportunities in the market right now. But Chewy is not one of them. Before you go, check this out real quick. So we are giving away all our courses absolutely free of charge. You don't have to take out a credit card. You don't have to join a Patreon group. Everything is free of charge. So let me show you how to get access to this real quickly. If you go to our website, globalmoneyacademy.com, then you will see all our courses down here, which is retirement planning, stock investing, creating an online business, even income generating and real estate investing. All you have to do is click on this sign up button, which will take you to a page where you need to create your profile. Once your profile is completed, we will personalize your profile for you and then you will get access to all our courses absolutely free of charge. And that's not all. You will get access to the spreadsheets of all the stocks we have covered up to now and you will get access to some amazing personalized exclusive online calculators that we have created for our money tribe. So join our money tribe today by creating a profile on our website, it is absolutely free of charge. And last but not least, remember to click on that red subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified whenever we do more videos like this.